Greetings and welcome to our daily walk through the scripture for May the 26th. Uh, today, your readings found you in 2 Samuel chapter 12, John chapter 16, Psalm 119, 65 through 80, and Proverbs chapter 16, 4 through 5. Uh, today, we're going to touch on John 16 just a little bit. Um, and, uh, you know, we're going to talk about two aspects of it, okay? And the first one is that, uh, well, Jesus says, uh, in a little while, you will see me no more. And then after a little while, you will see me. Okay, and the disciples are like, what does that mean? I don't understand. It's funny, you know, the disciples actually say that quite a bit. Um, Jesus says, very truly, I will tell you, you will weep and the world will rejoice and you will grieve, but your grief will turn into joy. So, um, I think we as Christians certainly know the depths of grief at times. We experience that in a number of ways. We experience it um, with the loss of loved ones. I did a funeral um, just yesterday, as a matter of fact, and uh, you saw a number of people there that were grieving. But for Christians, grief takes on a different um, aspect of it now. Now that you are followers of Christ, you have grief tinged with hope. Um, see, here's the thing about life on this planet on this giant hairball. Um, there is no guarantee that our life is not going to be one of much grief, much suffering. In fact, I, I think in some times we feel like we measure our days based on cycles between grief, right? <laughs> Here was a bad instance in my life, had a few good days, here's another bad instance in my life. If that's you, I want you to take solace, I want you to take hope in this, that at some point, your grief will turn into joy. That doesn't mean it's going to happen here on this planet. But at some point, there is a guarantee that you will experience true peace and joy. And that will come on the day that we see Jesus face to face. See, we have this misconception, I think, sometimes that that God wants to um, make us rich and happy here on this planet. That's not, that's not what he does called us to do he called us to follow him and remember he said they hate me so they're going to hate you now that doesn't necessarily always mean that the government's going to hate us there are a lot of great followers of christ in the government but it does mean that the world which is full of sin uh, and has fought against us since the fall of adam and eve and the fall of creation uh, is going to continue to fight and rail against us life is going to fight and rail against us uh, and we're going to experience that, but we will all experience this great, incredible joy. We like to think of peace as happening here on this earth, you know, like when we pray for someone to be healed, uh, we pray God heal them with the idea in our brain of we're going to keep them here uh, and they're going to be here. And yet if we really want them to be healed, we really should be praying for them to be able to go see the father. Because that's where true healing occurs. So I wanted you to think about that for a little bit. Think about what it means really for grief and for joy uh, and, and what really brings about joy. And then the second thing I want to bring up today is because um, Jesus talks about how uh, we get to ask and whatever we ask, the Father uh, will will give to you, okay? Um there is a, a little bit of a misconception on that idea also when we say we ask and we will receive and anything we ask in my name, it will be given unto you. There's the caveat first, in my name, which means that we need to make sure that we're not asking for things that don't honor and glorify God because that is what Jesus said he came to do. I came that the Father may be glorified. Well, if we're going to ask for something in Jesus's name, that means that we have to ask for something that's going to glorify God. So that should change our parameters on what we ask about. But not only that, but it should also mean that we should be experiencing change within our heart. That when we ask of things, we need to be making sure that whatever we are asking for within our heart is to honor God. Okay? That is the point of what we're supposed to do here. We experience joy. We experience grief. But we experience all of the hope and the peace that surpasses all understanding. If we are sold out for God, if our daily actions are designed to honor God, whatever they may be, whatever they may look like, we should be doing it all and doing it all for the glory of the Lord. That's our purpose. So asking in the name of Christ means that we are asking also in the heart of Christ. And Christ's heart was to glorify the Father. Therefore, our heart should be there to glorify God. Okay, there's your thoughts for today. Have a blessed one.